this video, why some high potassium foods are actually healthy for you. Catherine here, I've been working with kidney disease patients for almost 10 years now and today we are going to see how the field of nephrology is changing their view of potassium in foods and how this affects you. Question are foods such as bananas, mangoes, and avocados the real cause of high serum potassium levels? Doctors are thoroughly re-evaluating the association between potassium in the diet and potassium levels in the blood. According to this recent study you see here, potassium in the diet is not to blame for high potassium levels in the blood of kidney disease patients. Doctors started noticing that patients with the highest potassium levels in blood are not those eating more bananas or mangoes. Doctors now believe that it's not potassium in the diet you should worry about, but certain clinical condition. Let's see what they are. Patients with hyperkalemia exhibited lower serum bicarbonate, higher serum creatinine, higher proportion of diabetes mellitus, and the use of renin angiotensin aldosterone system blockers, but lower use of sodium bicarbonate supplements. So, there are four things here that can cause high levels of potassium in blood. Number one, not taking sodium bicarbonate supplements. And guys, as usual, remember to consult your doctor before taking any remedy. Second, the second thing you should be on the lookout for is diabetes. Diabetes is also linked to hyperkalemia. So if you have diabetic kidney disease, make sure that your serum potassium is under control. Get checked regularly. Third, third thing here is renin angiotensin aldosterone system blockers, ARBs and ACE in short. These include losartan, telmisartan, and more, but also lisinopril, anolipril, and so on. And also beta blockers such as tectral, tenormine, are known to cause problems. If you are taking one or more of these, you may be suffering from what doctors call drug-induced hyperkalemia. These are the first choice drugs in hypertension in chronic kidney disease. So, these three things are what you should worry about, not potassium in foods. Now guys, this study is very solid. It was conducted on real patients. It is published on the journal Nephrology Dialysis Transplantation, which is peer-reviewed and it proves a very valid point. Researchers concluded saying that before restricting dietary potassium, the patient's intake of potassium should be carefully evaluated and other potential clinical factors related to serum potassium balance should be considered in the management of hyperkalemia in CKD. And yet, we all know that patients in 2022 are still advised to limit their dietary potassium intake. Well, the reason is clear. While foods are not the cause, it's a lot easier for a doctor to tell you not to eat foods that contain potassium than to show you alternatives to taking ARBs and ACE inhibitors. Now guys, if you are actually taking pills for your blood pressure, don't stop. You need those if you want to live. But remember that there are lifestyle and dietary changes that can help bringing blood pressure down and reducing the need for ARBs and ACE inhibitors. Here's an example. Leaching vegetables. What leaching means is that you can actually remove the potassium from your veggies, which is actually great. You should do this whenever you can. The more variety in your diet, the better. This works especially well on potatoes since they are richer in potassium than the other vegetables. You can do this on sweet potatoes too, but also on carrots, beets, winter squash, and rutabagas. But don't leach low potassium veggies such as eggplants, bell peppers, turnips, radishes, spaghetti squash, because leaching will also lower the contents of other mineral and vitamins. Here's how to do it. Peel the vegetable and discard the skin. Place it in cold water. Slice and make sure the pieces are no more than one eighth of inch thick. Rinse the pieces in warm water. 
Now soak the pieces in a large amount of warm water. Ideally, pieces should be left soaking for at least two hours or more. Rinse again with warm water. Cook the vegetables. Now, most recent research also added another step to make this even more effective. Remove the potatoes from the water halfway during cooking. Rinse them again and finish cooking after changing the water. With this water, we are getting rid of up to 70% of the potassium in these potatoes. This means that, for example, a cup of potatoes will still have about 200 milligrams of potassium. So, if you have a potassium allowance, be sure to pay attention to portion control. However, compared to the 600 milligrams of potassium a cup of potatoes will have, it's still a big improvement. Guys, I never talk about vegetable leaching in my videos because it's literally the first thing that pops up on Google when searching can CKD patients eat high potassium foods? What this means is that even the most ignorant of general practitioners should know this by now and they should be telling you how it works. I always try to focus on little known remedies that your doctor will discover in the next 20 years. But in my life, I've also learned that you should never take anything for granted. It's clear that while some patients can eat all the potassium rich foods they want, many still need to limit potassium intake. So remember to get checked for potassium levels if you are taking blood pressure medications or if you have diabetes or CKD in the advanced stages. Now a very important question. How can you keep track of how much potassium you are getting every day? There are various ways to do this. The easiest way is to have your dietitian set up your diet and to follow the plan as accurately as possible. This method has several pros and just one can't. The biggest pro is that a renal diet is a strict diet and having an expert that had dot all the I's and cross the T's for you will make your life easier. Trust me when I say that you do not want to have a nutritional deficiency that makes your kidney function go down without knowing why. There are a million mineral and vitamins you should care about and it's not always easy. The cons here is that you will have to renounce to a lot of seasonal foods that maybe your dietitian didn't consider. And what if you really want to eat cherries today because they're on the tree just waiting to be picked? My advice here is to use a free app that lets you track your nutrient intake. You can use the app to input your current diet and see how many calories and carbs and fats you are intaking every day. Then you can remove a fruit and replace it with cherries or whatever you want to eat after doing a search on Google and see if your macros and macronutrients are still in range. Some of the best apps that let you do this include Nutritionix, MyFitnessPal, Chronometer, Lucid, and more. They all do a similar job. They all let you track with sufficient approximation your macronutrients. The two I can recommend you to try are MyFitnessPal and Chronometer. The way they work is very easy. You can input any food you want as breakfast, lunch, dinner, and so on. And the app will tell you exactly how much protein, but also phosphorus, potassium, sodium, etc. you will be getting. Also, you can set daily goals for these nutrients, which is very useful. Both these apps are free and can be used on Android, iPhone, and even on a PC via web browser. Okay guys, today we have seen that you can greatly reduce your need to limit potassium in the diet when you start to lower your blood pressure with lifestyle and dietary changes. So the big question, how can you lower your blood pressure naturally? Well, there are five ways including a special vitamin but also recipes and foods to do this. I've shown you what they are in my video up here and this is all for today. Thank you for watching.